Thank you, local band Smoke Out. I think we're golden. <laughs> Ladies, technology. Yeah, I know. Technology is crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Shaley, a.k.a. Deja. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. How are you, sir? And happy early birthday. Oh, thanks, dude. I'm hanging in there. Just uh, chilling. Got my groceries for the weekend. Shooting a music video day after my birthday, just just keeping it going, you know. It's just another day, really. So, so album release day, you're shooting a video. Uh, well, no, Saturday. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, day after. Dude, it's all it's all happening, man. Pegasus is coming out on Friday. I know you're excited, uh, and I know that when when working on something so heartfelt like this. There, there is trials and tribulations. Can you tell me, looking back, what was the hardest song to complete and why? Mm, that's a good one. Um, uh, I don't know. To be honest with you, I think one of the hardest ones to finish was probably um, Miss You So because there were so many like different ways I could have taken that song and there was like I had like th two other courses written for it too. I even like posted one too early, like promoting you know the the campaign when it was out, and people got attached to it. And I'm like, oh no. But yeah, I think that was that that song, and and, and it was just the intro for like year a couple years before I actually like sat down. And was like, this there's something about this song I feel like connects with a lot of people and and my listeners, and this album needs something like this on that on it. So. uh yeah, it took me a while, but once I found that chorus, which was there the whole time, it was just literally me singing the intro, but full voice. <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, that was pretty much it. Those are fun little magic moments that happen when you, like, hear it a different way, even though you've heard it a hundred times or something like that, and you, like, an idea snaps. From, yeah. from all the stuff that you do from a... Some would call it demos, but I feel like it's, it's almost completed versions by the time it gets to a Joey how much does he actually do from taking that version and then to what we hear from the first time is he is he like reshaping it having you redo guitars drums vocals again can you just break through like or talk about his process well his process as a producer now is you know when he was a producer back in the day it was a little more punk rock where he was like handling everything you know he the bands were coming to his house he was sitting down with each individual artist working out these kinks to their little ideas they had, because I've said this a lot pretty much in every interview, but most bands come in with, you know, one or two songs that are whatever, and then like four ideas, like riffs. So Joey would come in and help formulate these songs and, and pretty much write these almost from the ground up for them. But in this case, it's different. And he's also moved on. So he's, he's like a, an actual producer now, not like that, not, not a, all around producer like he was, which there's nothing wrong with either of them, but being just an actual producer and overseer and hiring the right people for the job to to get the best out of the artist and what they're going for, that's basically what he does. He oversees it, but he also, he's really hands-on. So when we were, when he came out here for about four days before I flew out there to do vocals and he did pre-pro with me. And I pretty much wrote all the songs from A to Z. I'm talking all the parts were there. All the lyrics were there. Um, all the ear candies, some of that there, you know, here and there. And he came in, fine-tuned, like, all my drums, made sure that they were felt like a real drummer sometimes. Because when you're programming drums, you know, you can lose the feel. I mean, I am a drummer, too. I can play it, but I don't, I don't have the mics or the technology to record it all. And I don't even want to go there. It's way easier doing MIDI, especially when you're we're doing it the way that I did it, which is just saving cost, time and money and just getting in there and banging it out. But um, yeah, he sit through that. He added post-production. He works in tangent one-on-one -on -one with everyone else that was involved, like Nick. He's the one that mixed and mastered it. And John did post-production. So John would take like all my synthesizers and ear candies and, and, and redo most of them and make them sound super pro. Because, you know, while I'm writing it, I don't, 
that's not my specialty doing all the electronic stuff i i've always had it in my music but this guy specializes in it so he takes my crappy ideas and makes them really good and meanwhile joey's overseeing all of this involved in all of it making sure every movement that we're doing is for the better of the song you know and this was a unique experience for joey and he'll, he'll even say this because like most of the time you know he he's working with a band that needs a lot of help with the writing and figuring out these songs in my case He's basically working on top of almost a finished product. So he was able to really dive in since we didn't have to work on writing parts. We just had to work on making every single part work, flow, and sound the best it possibly could, you know? Oh, yeah, that is awesome. Uh, Chad wants to know, uh, how much fun was the You Wish video shoot? And then to roll off of that, can we talk about the bat as the giveaway to the fan that I believe got the, uh, the signed bat? And then on top of that, there seems to be like a lyrical commonness in the f the four singles that are out so far. And I feel like they can be Im implied as a relationship, but also as a relationship or vice that I know that you've overcome. Is that a good way of interpreting some of the lyrics? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's songs about relationships. There's songs about just myself. I think... This album in particular focuses more on like me and how I felt. That's not to say that there's songs that aren't just songs to be songs to sing about, like love songs or just things I've that experienced in my past and advice I try to give through song. Um, but yeah, it's really, really close to me. You know, a lot of it. Yeah, it's just the way I've been feeling. You know, I think this is one of the most present albums lyrically I've done um, where it's like everything that I was feeling from the beginning of writing this or those demos to now, you know, it's it's really present for me, which which isn't usually normal because a lot of times when I'm writing songs, they're always something that happened way in the past or something I'm hoping and wishing for, not really ever like what's going on now, you know. What about the the music video for You Wish? Was that how was that? Who shot that? Or as far as the director and. Uh... Um, yeah, um, You Wish, I wrote that script. I've pretty much been writing most of my scripts in my music videos, and then I'll hire a director. And, you know, we just got our heads together as my buddy Nick from uh, AZ. You know Nick. You, okay. you have to. Yeah, Nick um, Galaski or something. I don't know. I can't. I don't want to butcher his last name. But he. I've known him for a while, and I approached him with that. And uh, it was fun. You know, it was cool because I had the idea of getting the circular track so we rented one of those so we can get that cool like cinematic shot in the the infinity black room and then yeah i just wrote a simple script of smashing materialistic things you know that that um sometimes have made me feel like uh worthless and uh not a human being you know and, and it's always you know lots of metaphors you know lots of metaphors it was a fun video it was definitely scary Sm that was real glass and all that stuff so like when i'm swinging it you know i'm turning as fast as i can after i swing so that shit don't go in my yeah, eye for real <laughs> it was scary that uh there was a there's one part where i smashed one and like one of the glass things went right at somebody that was filming it from afar and it's um uh yeah it's pretty scary but we did it and I, and i and i didn't get one cut but i actually if you've seen the music video i have a band-aid on and i don't think anybody really noticed but it's there and I burnt myself you with the soldering iron. No, <laughs> this is I burnt myself the day before on a freaking rice cooker because the steam I put my, I was grabbing okay. something over it just singed me, dude. It was the worst burn I've oh, ever. No. Had. So it was like blistered up and everything. Oh yeah, it popped while we were there, so I had to put a bandaid on. I'm like, God damn it. Oh well, that's nasty <laughs> for sure. Um, let's see. So so with it coming out on Friday, I know you said you're shooting a video on Saturday. What what do you do you do you have any celebration hanging out with family going somewhere to to I know you're probably stacked with interviews and, and press stuff blah 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 but when it's time to just relax and woo saw like what do you do on Friday now that it's finally out I don't know I've never actually ever experienced a celebration for something like that I've never had like a group of people like throw me some like bash uh, this year I'm just hanging out with my mom and my girl and we're going to uh Tomorrow we're going, we're celebrating it, you know, like pretty much the release tomorrow because that's basically when it's released tomorrow night. But we're going to this restaurant in Temecula, California, and the Hank from uh, Breaking Bad, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. he he owns the place and he's there all the time. So and it's a it's like a Texas barbecue 
old place that's been there since like 1903 or something that he bought to save it so it can still continue the tradition so i'm really excited about that that's like the first time i've ever done anything like special oh, for yeah. but it's all hanging with family so. is the best so that's awesome yeah yeah i mean i would like to hang out with my friends but all my friends live in different states or countries and uh, i don't have any local friends believe believe it or not <laughs> it's just me out here dude Last time you were on the show, you dropped a little Jewel tidbit. I don't know if you meant to, but you said something about you and Austin have been talking and maybe talking about music. Has there been any updates on that? No. Um, no, I, I actually like decided it's probably not something worth my time at the at the moment. And it's nothing personal to him, but I think he has a lot in his life. And every time we've kind of like tried to make this work or do something, it's just kind of just you know i don't know he just doesn't seem as 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 determined as i am you know what i mean and i can't really slow down for someone else's pace and it's nothing personal to him but you know maybe one day we'll do it but right now i think it's most important that we both focus on our own immediate lives and make sure that that is you know solid before we can explore and and use all this extra time to invest into something like this because if and when we do do it it has to be the biggest thing ever right like we can't there's no like half ass in something like that. Everybody wants it. So we have to do it like as best of our capability. And I won't give anything less, you know? I totally agree. Great answer. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I feel like last time we did Rush trivia, Rush or Rush was on your wall or something in the background from a different angle. Is that still. still... Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was trying to think of like stuff we talked about last time. But, um, dude, so I noticed that you don't have any tattoos on this side. I don't think, at least from this angle, is there, is there plans to get any ink on your other side? No, I actually, I made an oath with myself back when I first got tattoos to leave the entire right side of my body alone. And, uh, and, and what inspired me to do that was Tom DeLonge from Blink-182 back in the day. I don't know if you remember, like he had like the chess piece and the full sleeve. He didn't have anything on that side at the time. I don't know if he does now or that, but that inspired me. And it's also kind of like metaphorically, like, you know, I'm still me on one side and these are like, this is the shit I've been through, but I'm still me, you know, I, you know, so if I'm, if I'm turned this way, you just think I'm a dork, right? If I turn this way, you think I'm a bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I love it. it. It makes sense when you explain it. That's funny. Uh, I know Deshell's mostly a one man project yourself, but have you have you worked out the kinks as far as band members for for live show possibilities in the near future? Oh, I don't I don't know, man. I, I, I get asked that like every day and I, I hate having to answer it because I, I know a lot of people get let down. But like I it, it doesn't really seem like it's something in my cards at the moment. And mainly it just it just boils down to, you know, money, you know, even if even if I did find a band which is few and far in between where I live in the middle of nowhere in the high desert, the money that I have to spend to drive, to rent a lockout, to fly these Wait people a second. out. Wait a second. Hold up. The high desert what? of Southern California? Yeah. That's where I live. And you love it? I live in Asperia. What? Oh, I live in Anza. I don't even know where Anza is. That's on the other end of the high it's desert. Past Temecula, and then it's like, it's past Temecula and then east a, a little bit. Oh, it's a different high desert. It's got to be. Because Temecula is like way south for me. Yeah. Anyway, I'd never heard of a second high desert. That threw me off for a second, but that's crazy. Uh, so, yeah. So, if, if financially it's it's possible, gigs may be in the future. Yeah. I mean, it, it all costs money. Everything costs money. And um, there, there's talks about maybe doing like at least a live, uh, you know, digital viewing or something. But even that. You know, you still got to get members. You still got to practice. You still got to rent a filming crew. Then you got to mix it. Then you got to edit it, you know, and then you got to, you know, it, 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 to me, it's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pull enough to make that worth it. And if I were to do like a live, sh live show, it's almost like I should probably just do a tour then because I'm not going to like put in all this time and money and effort just to play one show and then hope to make our money back. I mean, on tour, you might make your money back or break even, maybe make a couple hundred bucks. Like who knows? But it all depends, like, because I, the fans need to, it needs to be undeniably something that I have to do. Like, there's enough people craving it, people are getting upset, and the money's for sure going to be there to, you know, to pay all these people. Because we're not kids anymore. When when, when Deshell started, we, we didn't care that 
I mean, we did, but we didn't make, nobody made money. I just, I didn't start making money until I went independent and stopped touring. So like, but now that, you know, we're in our thirties, it's like, there's no way six, seven people can hop in a van and live off of $10 a day and come home with nothing with all their bills and stuff. So that, that's what you got to think about. Cause if I bring people on tour, we all got to at least be getting paid, you know, two grand a month just to survive, you know, with our bills at home, at least, you know, and that's seven times two grand. So that's $14,000 a month we have to make. And it's just not, you know, you know, it's like on the road, dude, you don't make shit on these C market tours. You know, it just sucks. It's a lot of merch. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's a lot of merch. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so once, once Pegasus is out, are you, what's, what's the next plan? What's the next thing that you're, you're, you're hungry, you're, you're working for? I know, I know the extensive uh, music video Saturday, probably another one in the future after that, I would guess. Um, but how do you, how do you push it? How do you, or, and then what's after that? Well, for me, this was like another like huge learning experience. Um, you know, when I did Mr. Payne, the prior album, I just pretty much punk rocked that one. You know, I was dealing with just doing doing the bare minimum with the bare minimum of fi financing I had. Um, this one was I was able to, you know, get a radio team, get a press team for the whole album, um, get some music videos, get cool art. And I learned a lot of stuff along that way. And I think the next step is for me, especially if I'm not touring, um, is just to you know hone in on my socials more, try to understand those logistics, and also I'm getting into uh, cinematography. I'm sh that's what I'm shooting in the video, music video. I'm shooting it and directing it myself. Um, so that is something I want to get into, and that will really help. You know, I think one of the biggest shortcomings in Day Shell is the visuals, and this isn't to like talk crap on any director that I've worked with. This is more or less me giving them my vision and me expecting them to see what I'm seeing in my head and it never gets anywhere remotely close and it's not their fault. It's just, I have a huge vision, you know, that's it. same with my music. Everything that I do artistically, I see it in my head and it's disappointing when I don't get the product I want. So rather than spending $2,500 for this music video, I'm going to spend $25 and get myself a camera rig and start doing it myself. And if anything, just find a, uh, a camera operator that can that can film me and while I direct him and tell him what to do. So that's kind of like my next step to, for one, save money, be more artistic and be more consistent with my art because Daystar is an artistic band. So visually, if I can make that more consistent as well, I think that's just going to help the overall brand and, uh, you know, ha have more people maybe take Daystar more seriously, you know. So that's the plan. You know, like, I don't know, the, the future remains to be seen, but that's what I'm looking for right now. And hopefully I want to kind of like, I'm not going to do an album probably ever again. That shit just almost nearly destroyed my life and my brain. Dude, it was so hard, dude. I'm not lying. Like, I look like I made, it looks like I, it's all easy. It's not. Um, but I, I do want to kind of just release singles now. And in between that, I want to work with other people. I want to take this huge weight off of me and doing every single intricate note and all this stress and and figuring out press and doing this and paying that and work with like other people that are looking for a singer for their band and taking that weight off me that I, we can all contribute together and do something like that because that that would make me feel better like to not have to like literally like kill myself over a song for once in my life would be a nice relief for me you know <laughs> for sure hell yeah uh for for someone that's that's wants to strive to achieve the vocal status that you have do you have any rituals where let's say it's 30 40 minutes before you're going to hit record for yourself what are you drinking do you have any warm-ups that you do do you do anything after three hours of recording vocals to be prepared for the next day can you talk about that process um I mean, you'd be surprised there's no technique there's no warming up there's just go and do you know like um uh, you know, I like to try, you know, like before I recorded this album, I got deathly ill, so I wasn't able to, but I got about two days of just like singing about a half an hour each of those days. So that was basically what I did to prepare myself <laughs> to record this 10 song album. And uh, yeah, there's never really been a ritual other than like live. Um, usually I'll do like my pitch scream. Like I'll just scream the word fuck really loud and just kind of do it high and do it low. And that tells me where I'm at. It goes, uh oh. I need to scream again, loosen up my throat. And then I may have to scream two or three times the word fuck. And then it's clear. And then I'm like, all right, 
let's go. Like, that's it. You know, I just, I don't know. I mean, it, I'm sure it, it would be good if I did like warm up and shit, but like, I just, I don't really like singing. I don't know if I told you this. I don't enjoy it. It's very hard. It's like drumming. You know, it's like, go play a bla blast beat right now. I don't want to do that. Especially when you're by yourself. When you're with a group of people, you have like that energy from everybody in a live room. You're like, well, I can't be that guy that's not in with this cool, awesome experience right now. But when you're by yourself, you're like, do I really want to sweat and have veins pop out of my head and sweat getting to my eyes <laughs> and hurt my throat right now? You know, so I just sing when I need to sing. And uh, I think a lot of it is also mental. Like I'm, I'm always constantly like processing what I want to do and analyzing and strategically figuring out what I want to do months before I even like open my mouth up. Like there's times where I'm writing songs and I have the riff and I don't go press record until I have a full map in my head or at least enough of a, uh, a route that when I put when I go to the computer and start recording it, I can get to a place where I feel like, okay, cool. This is going to be a song. So I think a lot of it for me is, yeah, just a lot of mental planning in my brain before I get there. And I can, I can write, I could figure things out without having to actually do it. You know, I've just been doing it for so long. I just know how my brain works and I can understand, you know. I love it. Shaley, I know you're a busy man. I appreciate your time. Pegasus dropping Friday. We're ecstatic about it. So, so excited to hear the rest of the album, dude. I know you've been working hard for it. You, you deserve a celebration. Tomorrow is that celebration. Happy birthday again. But thank you, man. I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Anytime, man. I, I love coming on this show, dude. You guys are awesome. Thank you, sir. Shaley of Day yeah, Show! Hell yeah. Pegasus comes out Friday. Make sure you grab it, stream it, check it out. Hit the follow button and support him. All right, brother. Well, you take care, man. Thank you, guys. Cheers. You take care as well. Hi, what's up, sir? Welcome to the local band. Smoke out.